today's segment of Grassroots Racer, we have a man who started a little bit later. So he started 1997. He's done a lot of things, including drag cars, rally, races at the Gippsland Car Club sometimes, and he's won many championships in hill climb. So with that, I present Brett Wild. Hey, Ethan, how you going, mate? I'm good, Brett. I hope you're having an awesome day. It's, and it's really cool to have you on the segment. So where did it all begin? And with that first car you built in when you were 21? Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'd um, been around race cars my whole life, thanks to my dad. My dad started racing in the early 70s, right before I was born. And I've worked on other mates' cars and done bits and pieces. And a good mate of mine, I don't know if he work on his car with him, asked, him to, asked me to come out and you know do a bit of a test day with him. and sort of see what I thought about how his car was progressing and that. And I went out and had a go at it at Sandown and I thought, this is pretty cool. So um, then I hunted around and got a car for a car of my own and spent about eight months building it and um, been racing that ever since. So the first race car I ever built of my own was 1997 and I've still got that car and that's the car I still race now. So I've been racing that now for nearly 25 years. And what was the car that you built and used to race? It's, 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 an, it's a thing called an Isuzu Bellet, so it's a predecessor to a Holden Gemini from the mid-60s, from about 67, 68 model. So yeah, that's very old. Did you, where did you actually find it or buy it from? Well, I'd had, I bought my first one of these when I was 15. I, I just did it up as a road car. Um, I, you know, had been working two jobs as a kid after school and had a heap of money in my pocket. And um, my dad had had them back in the early 70s before I was even born as, as road cars. My dad rallied a bit as well. And, did some other stuff and um, yeah, when I wanted a car, Dad said, oh, I've got some, still got some parts in the shed for a Bellet. We should find one of them. So we found one of them and I had it as a road car. And then I've just sort of progressed from there. I thought, well, I've got one as a road car. I've built one as a race car. So I found one of these things through some other mates. And then, yeah, just sort of went from there. It's built it all in the shed at home. And yeah, I've been having fun with it ever since. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I, just, I can't believe it. You know, and you're still racing that today. So. Um, where did you race that though back in the day? It was going to sort of take the step into doing state level stuff. It's a, it's a two litre sport sedan, so I was going to race it in that, but it was just too expensive. And at the time, um, I bought out the first house or second house. And um, my daughter, who's now 20, she was only fairly young at the time. And um, just money didn't line up. So just sort of did club stuff. And then a mate of mine got into hill climbs. And, he was doing the state championship and I went along to give him, give him a bit of a hand one weekend. I thought this is like for the for the bang for buck, you know, because it's pretty cheap to do. It's, it's only like $100, $120 entry per round. And so I thought I'll get out there and have a go. And I brought my car out to a round in 2012 or something rather like that and won my class first time out. And I thought this is pretty cool. So um, since then I've converted the car to being a hill climb car out you know, um, exclusively. I haven't done any circuit racing with it now for probably eight or nine years. Um, we just use it as a hill climb car now, so. So what's the difference between like a older car and a newer car? Well, the, the, new, the older cars, uh, if you go, well, we go four cylinder stuff like what I've got. The older cars mainly are rear wheel drive, whereas all the newer stuff is all front wheel drive. So I prefer rear wheel drive stuff. Um, the, the biggest challenge with cars like mine is, um, is parts. Um, especially with these things that I race, that you can't buy parts off the shelf for them. You've got to make everything for it, which is what I've done with this car. Like it, there's not, I don't think there's any real, other than the roof, I don't think there's anything standard left on this car now. Um, but the the newer cars are a lot lighter. That's that's the real difference, um, is weight. See, cars when they were made in the 60s and 70s were built out of really thick steel and everything was steel. You know, the bumper bars and everything was steel. Whereas everything now is built out of thinner steel um, and they've got plastic bumper bars and things like that. So. That's the real enemy of my car, is weight. Yeah, so, well, like you said, thicker chassis, they probably didn't have the technology that they have these days. You've informed me that you've um, done some previous championships and you've won most of them. Uh, um, well, you said you've won some of them, so do you want to tell us about your successful ones? Yeah, I've had a couple of championship wins. So I um, did some club stuff back in the day and I had, uh, with a club I was involved with a few years ago, I won two championships with them. Um, and then when, then I started getting into the hill climb stuff and I came second in the championship there in my class, not out one, but just in my class a couple of times to another good mate of mine, Simon. Um, and I got a bit sick of coming second. So um, I made a big push at it in 2018 and won the championship. There was seven rounds that year. I only ran five of them and I won all five um, and, um, and won the championship that year. Didn't race 2019, uh, just with work and, and those sorts of things that were going on at the time. We lived on house renovation and that as well. 
Um, and then last year, well, nobody raced thanks to COVID, but um, this year we're racing again and have been racing the championship um, since round one. And so far, so good. We're leading the championship after three rounds. So, um, so we're pretty happy with that so far. Quickly, let's just wind back to 2018. So there yep. were seven rounds. You won all five of them. So yep. you obviously didn't need to do the last two rounds. Um, no, I, I missed the first round and I didn't do the last round. I actually had to work that weekend. Well, that's, you know, really impressive that you still won missing two races. Um, but what series was that in and what sort of cars were you racing? So that was in the Victorian Hills Climate Championship, which is what I run pretty well exclusively now. Um, and was, was racing my Bellet and we're up against, uh, well, Gary, who you had on last week with his really, really fast little escort. Um, Simon's got a, another guy I know, Simon's got a Datsun 1600. Um, and a couple of other guys, you know, there, there's a guy that sort of comes and goes every now and then with Holden Gemini and a few other cars. So they're, they're all sort of similar cars. So they're all sort of similar layouts and um, similar ages and that sort of thing as well. So um, so in that respect, it's really good. So, and the one thing I do like about the Hill Climb Championship is uh, you get to meet some really cool people. I mean, the, the cars are what brings us to the track, but the people are, and the relationships you build with people are, are pretty cool. Um, and, and we go along to these to these events and just have a really good time together, really. We have a good laugh and a good joke and we all sort of rib each other and get stuck into each other when one of us stuffs up a lap or whatever else. So it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I will. that's why I love racing. One, it's what I want to do. And two, it's, it's very enjoyable when you've got um, competitive racers who, when they get to the track, they're dared to race. But, you know, when you take the helmet off, you can shake hands and be all friendly. You know, that's the relationship I, I sort of love in the paddock. So with this 2021 championship, where did you race the first round? First round was at Rob Roy in Christmas Hills. Um, the second round, unfortunately, was postponed. That's now going to be in September. That was supposed to be in February, but that, that was postponed because of the, that quick lockdown that the government brought in in February. Um, round three was at Camperdown, at Mount Lure at Camperdown. Um, and then round four was down at Bryant Park at Gippsland, where um, I believe you're going to have a run one of these days soon as well. Yeah, I'll try and get in there and um, hopefully I'm in the same class so I can, I don't know, give, a, give it a run to you and Gary. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, so you can beat Gary, mate. you got to beat him, he's the one we've all got to beat, all right? Brett versus Gary, this is interesting, you're both on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, we get, we get along really well, actually. Gary's a good mate of mine and I've actually done work on Gary's car for him as well, so it seems that I sort of do a bit of work on different people's cars and then they go out and beat me, but anyway, it, that's all right. You, are you and um, Gary like Hunt and Louder, you know, always switching between championships? Is that sort of how it is? Oh, uh, yeah, Gary's won more championships than, we, than me. He's won an Australian championship as well. I've only won a Victorian championship. But, um, but yeah, if, if Gary's not beating me, I'm beating Gary. It's, yeah, we're sort of the two of us have a, good, a pretty good fight sometimes. It's pretty cool. <laughs> no, no you, you both have been very interesting to talk to uh, so far, Brett. You've also restored some cars. So have you raced any of them that you've restored? I raced one of my dad's. My dad's still got a couple of race cars. He's got a, um, a thing called a Bowell that he, he bought as a 19-year-old kid in 1968, and he's still got. Um, and he's got an, a 1982 um, XE Falcon that's this, got this thumping great 351 V8 in it and stuff, and I've done a lot of work on that. I've raced that a few times. Um, I haven't driven his Bowell, though. I think he thinks I'm too much of a kid still to sort of have a go in that. I don't think he's going to give me a go in that one. Um, but I've, I've restored a few road cars, and um, I've still got... I think I've got five or six cars at the moment in the shed. And, um, and I've got one that's actually unrestored that's an original um, Bathurst race car from 1966. You were telling me about that and it seemed really interesting. Do you think that you could ever get it together and race it? Or if you you know it's not possible, would you love to race it, you know? Well, funnily enough, the car found me and I was actually going to build it um, to do group N racing with it, with, you know, historic sports sedans, sorry, um, touring cars. Um, and I found the car, um, not knowing what its history was and was going to actually think about building it as a race car. And then we started doing a lot more investigation on it and actually found out it was an historic race car that actually raced when it was brand new at Bathurst. So that straight away um, ended any racing ideas I had with it because it's just simply uh, not, Monetary, well, monetary-wise, it probably is valuable, but history-wise, it's too valuable to go chopping it up and doing things with it and risking damaging it. So, um, But I, I would like to actually do that. I would like to build an historic race car one day, but 
at the moment I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So. It's very cool and I, I also wish I had the opportunity to drive something like that but like you said it's almost um, not worth taking it out there and risk damaging such a piece of history. Do you have a bucket list car like if you know what I mean? Um, something you've always wanted to drive or race? Yeah I'd love to drive a Ford GT40. Um, uh, oh, there's a few guys around that I know that have raced them. I've had a, I've been to a few club sprint days back in the day at Phillip Island and the Sand and that and had a run around with against some of those guys out there that have got those and they're just an awesome piece of machinery and they're a car that was built to do a job and did the job really successfully. So if you have ever got a chance to have a drive for GD40, I'd love to do that. Brent, are there any sponsors that support you at the moment and are you looking for any sponsors? Yes, um, I'm sponsored by Elements Group, as here on my shirt. It's a company I work for. We're a building restoration company um, that looks after, um, you know, flood and fire damage buildings and premises for people. Um, Owen and Christine own that, own that company. They're very good friends of mine. They're racers themselves as well. and I help out with their race cars. They've got three or four cars and they look after me really, really well. So they're actually um, supporting me this year in the Victorian Championship. So I have to thank them immensely for all the help. Um, we're also looked after by um, Craig at Trackside Tyres in Kilsyth. He helps me out with my tyres and bits and pieces. Um, and helped out by my cousin Chris at Auto Line Service Centre in Montmorency. And also by Coxie up in Bendigo, up where you are, mate. So Coxie's Motorsport Spares, he helps me out with a few bits and pieces here or there as well. So there's uh, some great people. I know Coxie, um, oh, well, I've seen him. He probably doesn't remember me. Um, but yeah, I, I tried buying some Revolution stuff off him, I think. I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, how can people find you on social media and follow you? Okay, so if you, go, if, you go, if you go onto Facebook, I've got a Facebook page. It's Triple Seven Elements Racing. So that's triple as in the word, seven, the number, Elements Racing. Uh, we've got a Facebook page there. You'll know it straight away because it's the yellow and purple um, Isuzu Bellet. There's only one of those things kicking around. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main media we use. It's just We just sort of do a few updates here and there on Facebook. And if there are any sponsors that are looking to support you, is that where they can go? They can contact me through there. All right. And lastly, how long have you been a member of the Gippsland Car, Car Club for? I've been a member of the Gippsland Car Club now for about eight or nine years. Um, I thoroughly recommend them, if anybody's looking for a car club to get into, and go out and doing some, some proper grassroots level motorsport, get on to Gippsland. Gippsland um, are a fantastic club. They're well run. Uh, they're a very family-based club family-based club as well. They own their own facility down there at, at um, Newbra, down near Maui. Um, it's, it is very simply and widely regarded as the best permanent hill climb, hill climb facility in Australia. Um, they run days down there for club members, um, as in club member only days for entry fees as cheap as $50. Um, so I thoroughly recommend it. It's, you know, people say that motorsport is expensive. People, motorsport is only as expensive as you want it to be. If you want it to be cheap, and just go out and generally have some fun, you can be out on the track for less than a thousand dollars, right? And and the best way to do it is hill climb. And I, like I said, I thoroughly recommend Gippsland Car Club. Anyway. Just before we go, have you got any words to say to Gary? Because I'm I'm going to be the, the news reporter um, here in the situation. Have you got any words for Gary? Because you seem to have a, a bit of a friendly rivalry. So have you got anything to say to him before the next race? I think if I was Gary, I'd be very scared. Soon enough, Ed, and we'll get you in a car against Gary, and then I'll come out and coach you, and then Gary should be really, really scared. All right? Oh, my God. All right. Um, <laughs> that's been today's episode of Flipping Mats Grassroots Races segment. Thank you, Brett, so much for having a chat to me. Thanks to everyone who watches and listens to Grassroots Racer. And just before this, this has been an absolutely funny as episode. Not only has my backdrop dropped three times, Brett is so funny when he talks about Gary because their relationship is so good and um, got a bit of a rivalry. Yeah, <laughs> and, absolutely. Uh, yep. Drive fast and take chances, everyone. Thank you so much for listening.